test, test. Test. Hey, there we go. We're back. How's it going there, friends? Today is April 16, 2019. And my name is Jeff Fritz. We're going to write a little bit of code today. How's it going there? Oh, Dee Dee's here. Hello, hello. You heard me? You heard me. What was I doing? It couldn't have been that bad. Uh, let's see. They're rambling geek. Good evening. And thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. It's Taco Tuesday. Is it? No, I didn't say it was Taco Tuesday. Um, oh my gosh, look at the friends wandering in here. McNerdius, Janescu, hello, hello. Frackberg, can only hang out just for a minute, but good to see me back. Well, thank you. It's good to be back here, back in the the home home studio. Yeah, that's what this place is. Brave Cobra, hello. Uh, Meyer Jen, good to see you. Carrie's here. I was testing the mic in the prep screen. Ah, nuts. Yep, I was testing. Um, uh, gosh, Oscar Legatang. Hello, hello. First time from London. Welcome, Oscar. It's a late one. You can normally catch me at about three in the afternoon, two, three in the afternoon on Thursdays, Fridays, and, uh, what's the last one? Sundays. Yeah, that's, there you go. You like the, you like the cool bots. Oh, I'm glad you like the bots. There you go. The bot emotes. Thanks so much for, for that resub rambling geek. And of course, will make a donation this quarter to Vets Who Code. Thank you very much, as we do with all of our subscriptions and all of our uh, cheers. And uh, we're setting up. So uh, we're setting up to make our, our payment to uh, Black Girls Code. That's going to be coming here in the next week. Very excited for that. All right. Um, let's get some music playing in the background before we get in and talk about our projects that we're going to be working on today. Um, I, I, of course, like to play Music to Code By, and we're going to play today, um, Eeny, Meeny, I'm going to play Gold. I haven't played this one in a while, I don't think. There we go. Let's see if we can get that level good. That's not too bad. There we go. Um... Terrific. This is music to code by. This is music by our friend, Mr. Carl Franklin. There you go. Thank you, Carrie, for that music command in the chat room. This music will get you in the groove. It's scientifically designed to help you get focused on whatever task it is that you might be working on, whether it's writing code, doing homework, or even just doing chores around the house. Uh, check it out. Music to code by. It's at mtcb.plop.com. Or, of course, you can download the mobile app, musictoflowby.com, and you get three songs free just for downloading the app. 
check it out. I see a bunch more questions there in the chat room. I want to highlight the hat. I've got a brand new hat. This is from Black Horse Brewery, Tennessee Ales in Knoxville. I uh, visited their their pub and uh, enjoyed a fine brew. Um, it, terrific, and uh, I love the name Black Horse for for a pub. And uh, had to pick up the hat. So there you go. That's today's hat. So so happy to bring it back from Tennessee. Um, let's see. My hair asks, am I using OBS for streaming? Yes, I am. If you go to live.jeffreyfritz.com, you'll see information about all my streaming information, how it's configured, some of the things about what I do in OBS, so you get this effect that you see there. Hey there, Electric Havoc. How did I fix the infinite mirror loop? Um, it just doesn't run. It, I don't present myself. Latchlin Gordon, good morning. Good to see you. Um, got a Mega Man look. Yes, we're doing a little bit more of a Mega Man look to the bot that, that you'll have with the emotes. I've got to remove code stock now from my list of my list of events over here, and we got to drop dev intersection in there. That's going to be coming up. And uh, I suppose Microsoft build as well. Um, speaking of Microsoft build, and I didn't put I didn't put progress in there yet. I gotta get progress in there. All right, we'll get that in play for the next one. I want to make sure that you know we are currently running a we're running a giveaway. We're we're running a uh, yeah we're running a giveaway for one ticket to Microsoft Build. This is a ticket to the event. Uh, you have to get yourself there, but once you do, your entrance is paid for, courtesy of our friends at Progress. There's a link and a, a uh, panel on the wall just below this video here on on the channel on Twitch. Uh, check it out. Click through there. Fill it out real easy. Just some some contact information so the folks at Progress can get in touch when you win. You have to also list your Twitch ID so that we know that you're a follower here on the channel. So check it out. Thank you so much to our friends at Progress. We're going to draw a winner for that next Wednesday. You got about you got a little bit more than a week that you can enter and uh, let your friends know. Let let your families know. Mom, dad, the pets. Let them know they can sign up and they could win a ticket to Microsoft Build. Very cool stuff there. All right. Uh, what should we talk about today? Well, let's, let's first off go over here. We got a lot more followers here over the past weekend. We're up to 6107 as we cruise towards that uh, rainbow beard goal that needs to hit 7,000 by May 1st we literally have two weeks I don't think it's happening I, I don't think we're gonna make that goal that's okay we'll figure it out we will we will be sure to do something fun for build it might not be a rainbow beard though sorry to say don't think we're going to quite get there. That's all right, though. I'm thrilled with the support. I love being able to, to support and know that, hey, we're growing and we're taking this community somewhere interesting. Purple beard? Maybe. Depends. There's a lot going on at Build, um, and we're working on a schedule for all kinds of great events, things that you'll be able to participate in, uh, folks that we're going to interview, code that we're going to write together, projects we're going to work on together. Um, currently, we have five shows scheduled throughout the throughout Build. Five. It's going to be amazing. Heading over to Ulta to get Purple Spray. Uh, I've, I've still got Purple Spray, Didi. Still got it. I can bring it with me, and it will be amazing. I think so. I think it'll be great. But it's good to know that Ulta has purple spray. Now the question is, do they have the other colors of the rainbow? So I can kind of... I don't know. We'll figure out. Epic. Five shows. Oh, yeah. Five. Five epic shows. Let's... Hang on. Let's give it some... A little bit of gravitas there to five shows. Hang on. Let's do this right. Five shows. That's a lot. 
They had a lot of colors. Tell you what I want. Oh, really? Do they have chartreuse? Do they have midnight green? What's, what is that, McNerdius? Oh, my gosh. Five, five, five. Oh, I see it. Okay. Love the lightning sound. Should we run a follower razor? Follower razor? I'm not sure what that is. Hey, Rambling Geek. Hello. You were already here. Mm. All right. Um, here's what we've, what we've been working on. We've been working on this bot for our friend Quiltoni. It's got a couple bugs here that we need to work out. Um, and I'm going to work out those offline. I think this is a little bit of yak shaving that I can take care of. And I'm also going to finish deploying it. I'll hook that up to our Azure pipeline, release pipeline. There's some things there that we need to work through. But before I get to some of these other more advanced features, and let's, let me zoom in here a little bit so we can, we can get in, so you can see what's going on here. So, uh, let me share this link. There we go. As opposed to a fundraiser. Huh, sure. We can do that. That's kind of what I've been doing. Um, so we have, a, we have a couple, like I said, a couple issues here, and I think these are, these are like yak shaving. There's something that aren't going to be too interesting to work through. And then further down here, there's a couple things um, that really start speaking towards we need, we need to level up the architecture of this thing. The, the bot that we've built runs as a console application. It runs with .NET Core. Um, and it has a video component that runs as a website. And currently, we have that website installed in Azure App Service. So as we as we look down here, and you know, this is a nice enhancement. It doesn't really affect anything. Um, you know, these are enhancements that are next step things. Um, interactions needing to be throttled. That's not bad. You know, that's something we can we can. Uh, we can work through but it's not an immediate need um but what we're starting to see here is i've got more folks that want to use these features i've got streamers that we want to deploy this to without them having to maintain software on their own machines and in order to make that a little bit simpler i think we need to level up the architecture and i think it's time to start talking about multi-tenant configuration for the bot and um, consequently since it's going to be listening to many different channels multi-threading so I think we're going to need to make bot as a service bass that sounds like yeah, Brave Cubber you're making me a little sheepish here with that you know, see, see what I did there Sheep, sheepish no yes can I get a ruling from from the from the chat room? I like Janescu's idea. Pixel bot as a service is pass, but that people already have pass. Um, pixels. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how I can make it into Pez. Meh. Okay. Just spit out your water over that one. All right. Fine. Better than the horse. The, oh, what? Did I say JavaScript? <laughs> No, that's right. There you go, Brave Cobra. We're not going to write any JavaScript today. I'm having fun with that. I am, and and I do I do enjoy writing JavaScript. But it's something that uh, we'll get around to. We'll uh, I enjoy poking fun at. And then we'll change the architecture here so that it's more um, I came up with something today so that it's more microservice ish and then, we'll deploy many of them inside of containers and then, Robert Tables will be so happy because it's in containers pun, 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 and then, pun. fairy wings is here fairy it's so good to see you this is so this is an enhancement that we're actually putting through here so that a little bit of what Snickers Von Glitter bot was designed to do can actually be merged together with this. And we have one bot. Look out! Here comes Robert Tables now. And you blow it! No, he didn't blow it. He's raiding us. Oh my gosh. Raiders! Defend the channel! Exclamation point. Defend. Let them know that we will not stand for this intolerance. I drink 
and I know things. I do. Um, welcome, welcome, Raiders. My name is Jeff Fritz, and uh, we're going to write a little bit of code. We're going to write a little bit of C sharp, and we're going to level up a a bot that we were writing so that it's multi tenant. Uh, multi-threaded and it runs on the cloud in containers at some point and I know our friend Robert Tables loves containers this is gonna be something that I think uh, if you enjoy his stream when we get to that point we're gonna have a nice tight uh, block of code application that we can put in a container and it'll run great out there hey Moz love all those emotes love it Mr. C Sharp Fritz is my father. Actually, no, that's Mr. RJFO306. Aha! See? See what I. Okay. Um. <laughs> Shut up! All right, we'll get to this. Let's let's do this. Um. So what we're gonna do? do it! Yes, we're gonna take a look at our source code. Small bacon. Thank you so much for the ten bits. Appreciate that. And uh, with all of our bits, with all of our cheers, we'll be making donations this quarter to Veterans Who Code. Uh, can we then add service like those of Brendonius? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not familiar with his application. What service? Help me out there. So I was talking to somebody t earlier today. And what struck me is we have a number of applications, number of folks out there. He has a bot with lots of features in there. Okay, great. Uh, we'll need a plug-in system. Um, well, it's not... If I'm deploying this as a single service, as a single application in the cloud, um, I don't need plugins. I need to have a, a way to snap in new features. And I think we already have a bit of that. Because um, I, I don't expect folks to upload and do their own things. Yes, exactly, Brave Cobra. Exactly. Because I'm tired of my text-to-speech not working, no matter whose service I use. I'm tired of the unreliability of some of those. One service per container. So, Robert Tables, what I've run into is folks have... have many many microservices in their enterprise applications or whatever applications you want to call them and what I think we've run into is is something that I've inadvertently coined as MMA massive microservice applications MMA is that a thing what do you think am I overthinking that let me know. I think that's a thing. Massive microservice applications. It increases complexity. Yes. That's the danger. The on-ramping to get into that. Uh, yeah, MMA is, is uh, mixed martial arts. But I think... Yeah. So, th we have all these features that we're, we have out here. And I think it, it is hard to trace and debug. Oh, yes. So let's, let's talk about starting to refactor this into an application that we can make multi-tenant and that we can make happen. You like the hat? That's, that is Black Horse, right? Black Horse what? Uh, Black Horse Brewing. That's what it was. Great little microbrew pub. Um, uh, is that Emiliano Light? Thanks so much for the follow. I appreciate you joining me. And check out the the uh, the panel on the wall below for information about how you, as a follower, can enter into the win a trip, not win, win a ticket to build uh, giveaway from our friends at Progress. Hey, Sushinator, good to see you. So let's take a look at the source code here. I'm actually going to create a new branch. So we were in feature giveaway game, I think. I think I'm okay to... I don't want to merge this yet. If I'm going to merge it, I'm going to want to... I'm going... <laughs> if I'm going to merge this, I'm going to want to rebase and push. 
let me do that first so that I have it pushed up. No, you know what? Uh, yeah, let me put, uh, let me do it. Yeah, I'll explain rebase in a second. Um, so let me take a look at the log. All right. Oof. I'm looking for the origin master branch. Oh my goodness. There it is. All right, I want to rebase down to 2954 Fox Zero. So what rebase does, for those of you who aren't familiar with Git parlance and some of the things you can do here, um, we're going to uh, take all of these commits, all these changes that we've made between 2954 Fox Zero here. We're going to take all of these changes. We're going to mash them together so that they're one commit, one mega change to the application and push that into our history. Rebase plus push, push equals fun of merge conflicts. Well, that's why I want to do it once. And then we have a place to, to go forward without seriously messing up our master. Uh, so where was I? Two, two, nine, five, four. So I'm going to start there. Uh, yeah, look at all that. So I'm going to pick up all these changes and say S. Squash these together. Right? So there's several different things that you can do as you're rebasing. You can pick a commit and say yes, include this. And then squash it. Use this commit, but meld it into the previous commit. So I'm going to grab all of these. Oh no. There we go. Uh, top one, top one we're picking. Hope we'll have it rebased by the end. Nah, we got this. We got this. Your comment. Do, 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 do. Is it like the rebel base? <laughs> Uh, this one. There it is. Rebasing, and now I got to do that. Nope, I did it wrong. Nope, did it wrong again. There it goes. Yes. All right. Um, I'm going to get rid of most of these. And I'm going to get down there to completed MVP of the giveaway game and just change this to uh, huh, completed giveaway game. Yeah. Get rid of this one. Get rid of that one. Cool. And now I'm going to git push force. So that only my change is up there. And I'll do a pull request and merge it. So that just that one branch, of course it can't automatically merge, you stink. Yep, go ahead. Now it's gonna actually build, make sure it works. Um, as far as Star Wars celebrations, uh, you can use the fix up option if you don't want to keep the messages. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, thank you. Uh, is that Emiliano? Thank you. I'll have to remember that for next time. Learn something new. Um, so this says it should be building. That zoomed in really far. Here it is. It's building right now. Because we have Azure DevOps hooked up to our project, it'll actually build and show us what the changes are and run all of our tests to make sure everything continues to work here. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Come on. Why am I why am I doo 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 doing? Um Inu, thanks so much for the resub. Two months in a row. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for staying with us and bringing your Twitch Prime sub. Um 
Twitch Prime, of course. If you have Amazon Prime, you can link to your Twitch account and you'll get one free channel you can subscribe to, remove all the ads, get all the cool emotes. Thanks so much for using your Twitch Prime sub with me. And we'll, of course, uh, make a donation to Veterans Who Code. Vets Who Code. You can create a PR and get up with all commits and do squash or rebase when you merge into master. Yeah, but then it gets messy. Since Robert Tables mentioned it, will I be at TwitchCon? Yes. Uh, will I be streaming on site? Ask Sushinator. That depends on whether or not I... Streaming on site from TwitchCon is something very difficult to get access to. Uh, thank you, Nip345. I appreciate you joining us. Look forward to seeing you in the chat room. Um, and Fritzbot, that is awful. And a really old. It's very hard, yes. Um, would have to pull some... Pull some strings to make that happen. Otherwise, I might stream... Like, from the hotel room before the day. It's... Yeah. Commit fix up, followed by a rebase I auto squash. Git will automatically squash the changes, keeping the original messages. Oh. Nah, no worries about triggering. Triggering that bot, it's okay. Uh, ta -da. Come on. This is really taking a long time. And now I feel bad. I want to make sure that the tests pass down here, right? Come on, build. You didn't know Quiltoni was this complicated. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> No. Starting, here we go. Starting those tests. Come on, tests. Make sure they run properly. Never have to worry about triggering the fruit spot. It's okay. We're still, and we still got positive sentiment right there. Woohoo! Come on. Starting test execution. Crows with the resub. Six months. Six months. That is awesome. Thank you so much. Quiltoni is complicated. The bot, not so much. Oh my. It worked. All right. We got a good build here. So this should come back now and turn green to show me, yes, that it did run properly. And my only conflict is in the readme. And that's because I put in, yeah, some attribution. And I've got the build status. So I actually want to keep a little bit of both of these. Um, I need to put attribution in here for the dance song. Um, it is royalty free, but at the same time, I do need to provide some attribution for it. So I'm actually going to put it right here, the build status. And uh, we'll mark that as resolved, commit the deal, do the thing, dance with the stuff. Eight in total, six month. That's almost as long as Windows 7 support. Yeah, okay. All right, I see what you got there. Um, there we go. I don't need to see that because that's just the readme that it's doing there. Um, so let's merge this chalupa. There we go. Terrific. All right, see that? Didn't take that long. Go back over to the code. So now what I could do is I could delete that feature branch. That's not a bad idea. Right? Feature giveaway game. Merged. Goodbye. I should have clicked the button to delete it when I was there. You like Quiltoni so much. Quiltoni's an amazing streamer. You gotta check her out. If if you're interested in let me make sure I get this right. Crafts, games, uh quilts and, and animals, you gotta check out her stream. And lies. If you're into lies, check out Quiltoni's stream. There you go. Uh, how do you convert a string to float on C++? Uh, don't know. I don't do C++. I'm sure somebody here can help you, though. You bookmarked it. Check it out. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So let's... Uh, I'm going to wander over to the master branch. Uh, I'm going to pull in the changes. So I've got everything nicely kept right here. I'm going to delete the other feature branch. And this is just a little bit of, right, housekeeping to make sure that my source code isn't getting a little crazy here. Binks raid? Do we have a Binks raid? I don't have a Binks raid command. Is there a Binks raid? In 30 minutes, we'll be doing a giveaway 
a Steam game key to a random Binks member in the chat. Oh my goodness. There you go. I don't have a Binks raid command. Do I need a Binks raid command? Do exclamation point Binks raid. And you could win a game. Thank you for the follow, Chucky. I signed up for Binks last night while I was watching our friend Ellie Face's cooking show, Cooking with Heat. And uh, I, I looks like I'm being Binks raided. Thank you. What is Binks raid? Um, so let me grab a link to Binks. Oh my gosh. Is that uh, Shalaga? Thank you for the resub. Eight months. You'd love some cookies. I, I don't have cookies. And the cookies I have are, are gluten free. Um, Binks.tv. See, I, I'm not even signed up for these things. I, I don't. Yeah. Here we go. Go to Binks.tv and you can check it out. Hey, there's me. I'm on Binks. And uh, they'll give away. Check it out. Sign up. And you could win a you could win a game key they're gonna give away here in a half an hour right here live on stream. Oh my gosh, thank you, Binks. No lies, no lies here. So very cool stuff. I love the crossovers with gaming and creative streamers. Really fun. Um yep, we're now being featured on Binks. Very cool. Uh, it doesn't say what the game is, but you know what? Can't argue with free. So check it out. It's a very cool site. Yes. They help promote streamers. They help show off some of the cool things that folks are doing. And we're going to be working on a bot here. For those of you that are coming in on the Binks Raid. Um, we're going to we're gonna be working on a bot here that, that'll work with folks' chat. This is for... Was originally designed for our friend, Quill Tony. I'm going to shout her out one more time there. Um, and... We're going to start taking this bot that knows how to do a couple things with managing currency on stream. And it does, does some interesting things with an integration with Shopify. Um, we're going to start re-architecting it. We're going to start improving it so that it can handle multiple, multiple channels, multiple features, multiple configurations, depending on which tr Twitch streamer is logged in to use it. What do you think? Sounds like a pretty cool thing. We're not going to get it all done today, but we're going to start that conversation. We're going to write a little bit of code to do it. We're using C Sharp and .NET Core. Both are completely free, open source. Anybody can download and learn how to use it from .NET. All right. So I'm going to create a branch in my source code here. We create branches so that we can have things neat and tidy. Put them somewhere. Put our new features, our new development somewhere so that it doesn't get impacted by bug fixes to what's in our production, our released application. And it works on a Mac, yes! Um, Orchard Core is another, yep. That's working, uh, that works as well with uh, Shopify. So I'm gonna check out, we're gonna create a new branch here and I'm gonna, uh, I think we call this feature uh, multi-tenant, I think that's right. All right, so we're gonna to start to turn this into a multi-tenant architecture. Are you enjoying Visual Studio? Take a quick feedback survey and let us know how we're doing. There's just one small problem. I work on the team. So I don't need to answer that. I know how you're doing. I would be contaminating the responses. You know what I mean? You came here after Inside Xbox show. Nice. Thank you. All right. Um, so this is my source code, and it does things like a giveaway, um, and it's it's called the Pixel Bot, so named after the currency on our friend Quill Tony stream, uh, pixels, right? Not like like 100% recycled pixels, like what you're seeing here on the screen. You know what I mean? Um, and we're gonna start pulling this apart. There's there's these three parts here: the bot itself, which runs as an ap application. And then uh, a shared project here that has some things that we need to also use between the bot and the website, which puts the video widgets into the screen, like some of these things that you see here below. These are widgets that are running in my bot that eventually will consolidate into this bot as well. And I will take over and own all of the video property on Quiltonia's stream. Huh? 
Huh? Does that sound like a good idea? Oh yes, I will take over all of the video content. <laughs> no, that's that's a bad idea. Figured it was a good currency name since you are the Pixel Quilter. You gotta check out the quilts. Really neat, uh, like 8-bit themed quilts. Cool stuff that, that Quiltoni makes. Like, um, right? Like, I, I got a cool dice bag from her that I actually keep my microphone in along with the uh, stickers and things that I take with me when I go to conferences and the like. Uh, have not been there. Switch between Dev Chatter and Robertables tonight. Uh, it's a more sane currency than heckin' ships. <laughs> heckin' ships? I think you broke Twitch. Are you getting a quilt for this bot? Uh, I, I might. Winter is... Winter is coming. No, winter's not coming. Uh, winter's done. So we're going to start to refactor this bot and this website. Now, I think the website... Eventually, we're going to have to have you log in with a Twitch ID. If we're going to have it hook up to Twitch. And then eventually YouTube and Mixer. And what's the one PewDiePie is on? D-Line, the line do, 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 do. I don't know. Um, so thank you, Binks, for the for the Binks raid. And uh, welcome everybody over there on the Binks website. Great to see you. I'm not, I don't play games so much as I teach people how to build applications, how to build websites, how to build cool applications, mobile applications here on, on Twitch. Um, so I think the bot, as we start to look at this, the bot itself that we have here has some settings that include information about where the data is stored for the currency, the type of currency that's here, um, the different commands that are available, and we need to open that up a little bit. And then there's the, the video URL it connects to, and then the Twitch channel that it operates on. Uh, 10 Binks coins have been awarded to all Binks members currently in chat. Congratulations there, uh, Binks members. You've gotten an award. That's tremendous. Thank you, Binks Raid. Um, let's see here. Okay. Moving on. Uh, stream's been up for 39 minutes. 15 Celsius today will be 20 Celsius this weekend. So winter can kiss your shiny metal thing. Winter is over. The more you know. Um, oh, I need to put project in there. Fine, I need to do that. Yes. Um, uh, refactoring the pixel bot to support multiple multiple streamers simultaneously si simultaneously I I'd really like spelling correction in that in that chat box because I can't type although DLive has no API to program your bots to and only GraphQL you have to decipher from JavaScript <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Uh, got your Futurama reference. What do you know? Yeah, all right. Mm -hmm. So this very simple configuration that we have here, we need to start moving these out so that it's configured on a per channel. So if we, if we start taking some notes here on what we need to refactor, what do we need to make run on a per, per stream instance? Uh, Joker, why the horse sound? Um, it's become an ongoing gag here. Very similar to uh, uh, Young Frankenstein. In fact, I took the sound effect from Young Frankenstein. Don't tell anyone. Um, that when I, when I get a little snake bitten around JavaScript. And I thought it would be fun to uh, call it out every time that I talk about that language. You don't get that? It's a, it's a gag. It's a joke. It's an ongoing thing. Wait do you see what I'm going to do for PHP. <laughs> no, we're, we're not going to pick on PHP. 
I like JavaScript. I'm not. I'm. I'm just not an expert at it like I once was back before the uh, back before the really modern JavaScript ECMA ECMAScript 2015. The features that were granted to uh, that were added in the 2015 standardization. Stop. Wait. PHP. Yes. PHP. We got to go back and do some more work with our friends from Peach Pie. There's great there. Great stuff there. Seems standard to you? Oh, yes. It is very much a joke. But you know what? We can rebuild it. We can make JavaScript stronger. See, look at that. I, I combined sound effects. It was a crossover right there. Totes, my goats. Totes. Totes. No, there's not anything wrong with that. I, I Look. We're all here having fun. We want to entertain. We're not picking on anybody's languages. We're not... Uh, we don't want to offend anybody. But we want to have a little bit of fun together. And we know that there's some interesting things here. Let's focus already, people. Yeah, darn, darn tootin'. Let's get to it. So, we need to make configuration per channel. We need to... We need to get the bot so check this out let me I, I need to show you this uh where is it there it is here's the actual bot and this is where i think we're going to have some interesting things to kind of figure out here and test because as we get to scale right I, oh my gosh i can't believe i said that get to scale Woo! yeah um what this does uh i'm not going to get into this one right now but it actually do, 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 do. hang on why am i saying that there it is okay um when it starts asynchronously it creates a twitch client and then connects and listens inside chat but it listens with different credentials and it joins channels here I'm not sure about how this is going to scale this Twitch library as we start to add multiple channels for it to listen to at the same time. This could get a little crazy, but we need to join multiple channels and listen. Not only do we need to join and listen on multiple channels, but we probably don't want to just hang in those channels all the time. You're such a sucker for attention, says Sushinator. Nah, not really. Nah. I I would really like a button, Brave Cobra. I I I love that clip from last week. I just want a button to do the thing. Back to cooking dinner. All right, good to see you, Frackberg. Uh, Binks raid from French Tastic. Thank you. Yes, I hope. Are we still in the Binks raid? We might be. Latte Mote is here. Hello there. Um, good to see you. Uh, uh, I've got it. I've... People know me. And people know Latte Mote. No, Sushinator is here, not Sushi. Uh, check when the streamer goes live and then let the bot join the channel. I think you're right, Stelzy. Uh, join channels when the streamer goes live. Here's the neat thing about that. If we go to Dev Twitch TV, there's actually a webhook you can listen for. Uh, pub sub. Connection management, API limits, topics. Channel subscriptions, whispers. There's a notification you'll get when they go live that you can get when they go live. Where is it? Where is it? They've they've done a wonderful job naming these. Because they go from Twitch API V5 to the new Twitch API and then pops up. It's like, which one is it? Uh, let's see here. User has a new follower, streams in a change, has a changed state. Topic, stream change. Notifies when a stream changes, goes online or offline, stream title changes, or the game changes. So we could set this up and listen to different streamers, channels, 
and then start and stop appropriately. Um, a um, start and stop a thread to to manage and do that interaction. Same as the Shopify thing. Shopify is a webhook that you can receive. So yes, you're going to trigger that. Uh, the bot service is to be a stateless service that is multi-tenant aware, but the chat clients are no more than proxy workers that interact with it. Yes, and the, the chat clients will be stateful because they need to know if they're running a game, the interaction, and the current state of the... Uh, the... The text. The, the chat room. Never heard my state complain or get in arms. Um, did you see? Did you read the restaurant at, at the end of the universe? And let's see who gets that reference. The restaurant at the end of the universe. Um, make a right and it's, it's down there on the end of the universe. No. The restaurant at the end of the universe is referring to the time when the universe ends. Anyways. Um, What'd you do? I got off topic is what I did. Let's get back to this. Um, you did a long time ago. Me too. And Adams was a gift to humanity. He was. So I think Brave Cobra's right. The bot itself is a service. Right? If we think about our architecture that we're driving towards here, we'll have Pixelbot as a service. And underneath of that we'll have chat room chat room etc and then those will connect to the web page widgets and right that's a website it knows how to do that threading kind of thing right got 1500 real sf science fiction books here on your right getting dusty that's a lot of science fiction books all right, so I think um, <laughs> so I think we can do this. So if we start taking the bot itself, and then if we have bot clients that actually do the listening in the chat room, then we spin up bot clients and have them do the interactions. Cyrilash, good to see you. Nope, Latte Mote is not a bot. In fact, I think... No, don't say it. Uh, yes, I am one of you. Them. Ten more Binx coins to all Binx members currently in chat. Terrific. Make sure you check out Binx. Binx. What was it? Binx. Something. Uh, Binks.tv. Make sure you check that out. Sign up, and you can win free games. Game codes. Check it out. They're going to give away a game code, free game code here, in just a few minutes. As part of the Binks raid that we're currently in the middle of. Middle of. And a big thanks to our friends, uh, uh, Ellie Face, for introducing me to Binks. 645 Development, thank you for the follow. I appreciate you joining on us. Joining us. I look forward to seeing you in the chat room, 645. Is it 645 in the morning or is 645 like an address? Uh, let me know. Because uh, I need you. Wait, wait let, me, let me explain something to you. I um, need you to explain to me what that 645 is. So let's start refactoring out the Pixelbot as a service and set up Pixelbot threads, maybe? Sushi day. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for that three month sub I appreciate that and that's going to put you I believe in a blue hat thanks so much and uh, really appreciate that there she is Sushi Day of course is another one of our live coding streamers just like Robert Tables and I believe I saw Rambling Geek earlier in there yep there we are Carrie Payette as well make sure you check them out check the link to the team down below me 40 streamers that are all writing code live educationally right here on Twitch. So I think we I think we should start start off. Let's create a client class here and let's call this 
not a client, but this will be the thread. This will be the the channel manager that'll actually do the interactions with the channel. Team Live Coders, big time hype with the Binks raid. Make sure you Binks raid there in the chat, just like Helena C did, and you you could have a chance to win free games. And if you want to go to Microsoft Build, we're giving away a ticket to Build. Check out the link to Build down below. Microsoft Build 2019, May 6th through 8th. And if you get to go, we'll invite you to breakfast and you'll get to have uh, get to appear on stream sitting right here next to me. We'll write some code together. It'll be a good time. All right. Back to the code. I think we should. Breakfast with Fritz. Absolutely. Who doesn't want breakfast with Fritz? There's a lot of sushi in the room right now, and I'm getting hungry for Japanese. Is that a thing? Is that a thing? Yeah, look at the num num nums from, from Sushi Day. Absolutely. All right, so if we want to create... Right, if we're going to pursue this little bit of architecture here so we can start to have different threads, these channels that manage different chat rooms, this will allow us to, to set up multiple instances of these things so that we're effectively multi-threaded. Now, why is multi-threading important in this type of architecture? Excuse me. As we build the application out, think about this. Um, join me here. Come in a little bit closer. There you are. Hi, how's it going? Um, right now, this li this bot listens to one channel. And when it's listening to one channel, it's getting all of your messages and they're going by. And right now we have, a, what, about 100, 110 people in the chat room? When that number goes up and it's 1,000, 10,000, how do you manage all of that? You can't have one, th one application Right, no, you can't have one thread managing 10,000 requests in one channel and 10,000 in another. You're eventually going to break through there. There's a break point that's going to happen. And we need to make sure that we handle that so that everybody gets serviced when you interact with the chat. And then will send out more of these little threads with these pixel bot channels so that everybody, every Twitch chatter gets a channel that's managing them. And then? Well, maybe each channel has multiple threads that are handling then the requests that are coming in, the messages that are coming in off of that chat room. And then? We'll handle them and process them properly. And then? Magic happens? Maybe? I, I think that could be a thing. Did you already have a session about how to deal with su success on Twitch? You'd love to hear about my experience and how I deal with it. No. You want those channel visitor workers? And, uh, Sushi Nido, that's a good question. And I think, um, I think we should do something about that. I know just the people to invite. Uh, oh my gosh, Kulu83, five gift subs in the chat. Hello. Uh, thank you so much for that. Kulu83, gifting five subs to Frenchtastic. Mo Mo is it Motor Car? Icarus HQ, Bloody is Zelos, and Zulius. Thank you so much for the, those very kind subs. Look at that, Bloody Zelius. Thank you so much for the, fo uh, for the follow. And uh, we'll make donations to Veterans Who Code for each one of our subscriptions, each one of our bits that are cheered all through this quarter. Thank you for the hype. Absolutely. Let's get some hype in the channel. That's a great idea. Look at the love there. Frenchtastic with the follow. That's terrific. Oh my goodness. So much going on here. Wild Genie showing some hype. Absolutely. And the Binks raid continues. Kulu is a vet who codes. So makes sense. Thank you so much, Kulu. Yes, we're going to show some support to, to those folks who came back from from uh, from serving and they want to change their career they want to go into into software development we're going to make sure we support those folks so thank you very much Kulu83 it it means a lot to me that that you served for us um, and I want to show a little bit of thanks in return all right um, 
Oh, and continuing the gift sub from Malfunk. Nice. Thank you so much. Um, all right, so Brave Cobra saying, don't think thread is the correct approach here. You want those channel visitors, workers, channel rooms to be separate processes, not threads. Separate processes, not threads. The plot thickens. Um, so... We need about... What? Where did it go? Did I just see something go by? I'm scrolled up. Uh, we need about 887 of your friends to raid from the Binks raid. <laughs> we need about 887 to follow. Oh my gosh, we're over 6113. Oh yeah. Keep that going. Thank you so much. Uh, our service men and women and, and all in between. Absolutely, bloody zealous. Absolutely. All of our service folks whether and even whether they're American, Canadian, service folks that are helping out there to to uh, protect um, those of us who, who cannot serve, those of us who haven't, we very much appreciate it. If a thousand rooms use the service you want, a thousand, th ten thousand threads. No, that's where I think an orchestrator comes in, and and we hit a failover in this type of architecture, and we start bringing up more. Um, more containers at that point. Oh my goodness! Oh my god! Michael Jolly! Oh my dear god! Uh, 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 wow! Wow! Uh, I I don't have a an appropriate sound effect for this. I, I'm I'm looking. I am shocked. I am. Oh my! Fifty gift subs in the channel. All of those will be uh, will make donations to veterans who code six forty five development corn sixteen ninety nine Mika FCP FCP. I gotta read all these. Barbiola one, Alex twenty eight eight seventy eight, Tim Burgo, Colchi, Fireman seventeen, Ovidio Z ninety four, Paul Maldos, Merks, Mab uh, Mabe Segfold AX, Umiu, Vitamin Jeff, Doctor Mario Kart, Long Mars, Wolf Hybrid, Arcus Ar Arceus Don, Bob Howmeister, X Demon Saint, Hydeo, Pector, Cartoofer. Iliam, Dinga Heimerfan, Musical Bookworm, Binks Elf, Lezzy, uh, Chucky XS, W3R Venom, <laughs> Rauschen 13, 4 to 25 characters, Mustard Sword, Helena C, Carbon 21, I don't know how to read that one, I'm sorry, Cram 10, Cyrilash, Atomic J, Tenno Diablo, TI 1987, Crooked Finger Guy, Arthas Gaming, Magister 988, Gamer for Fun to You, Lut Rap, Congratulations, you've all been given a sub, a tier one sub. Thank you, Michael Jolly. That is extremely generous of you. I am shocked. I am I am so thankful. That is very, very kind. Wow. Um, um, a, a tier one sub to stand by reloading an Ellie face. Matt Veloso, you got a tier one sub. Congratulations. Um, wow. Thank you very, very much. All the love and hype. Absolutely. That is amazing. And 10 Binks coins were just awarded to all Binks members currently in chat. I, this is out of control. I can't control the chat room. Um, wow. Wh just wow. Thank you so much for that. Um, I think that gift sub is worth the rainbow beard all on its own, says Carrie. I... I don't know what to say. Uh, Joker has survived so many of these gifts, I think Thanos could have snapped his fingers and you would still be alive. <laughs> don't smoke. No, no, no. Throw me a freaking bone here. Do Bink's points affect the sentiment bot? I know a, a little bit. So there's this is the sentiment, chat room sentiment right here. We're at about 73% positive over the last uh, last minute? Last five minutes. 
yeah, big shout out for the Michael Jolly. Thank you so much for that. And uh, we've been talking about a project that we're going to work on here on stream. Some neat stuff with bots, robots. And a gift and a gift sub to Joker CRTV. There you go, Joker. Congratulations. Um, wow. That is amazing. Thank you very, very much. And Binks Raid is awarded uh, to Ilium Squidlet. Congratulations, you just won Squidlet from Binks Raid. There we go. Thank you, Wolf Hybrid, for the follow. Oh my goodness, so much going on here. All right. You did it all for the Binks points. <laughs> That is amazing. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you, thank you, followers. Thank you, subscribers. Do we have a count of the gift subs overall? They won't show me a count of gift subs, I don't think. Um, but I am, I am going to be sharing some numbers here in the next week or so. Um, yeah, it doesn't show gift sub oh no gifted subs it shows a dollar figure it doesn't show the number of gifted subs hmm. interesting yeah there's a lot of them there i am wow hey shmooly good to see you so let me come back to brave cobra and our discussion was around um and our discussion was around processes and threading here for how we manage the various channels um let's see all the sub friends that got subs go follow him he has very cool stream absolutely make sure you follow the michael jolly see it's not gonna work for you carrie but it works for me i don't know why but we'll figure that out um there's no way to get a number oh yeah only the dollar figure that's right fairy there we go. Fairy wings. He gets yes. So it, and actually no. It, it's an it's a weird number that I see in the analytics. Um, because the number that shows up isn't a multiple of two dollars and fifty cents. My number that's showing up here is a spot twenty spot sixty seven cents, which sounds weird, but. Do you want to scale the service differently from the amount of rooms you service? Yes. Let's get back to this. Let's let's get back in. Wow. Yeah. Let's right. Do it. Let's get back into this thing. Um, we want to scale it separately depending on the different rooms that we service. So don't mix stateful with stateless in a service. Yeah, we were coding. We were writing code. Um, don't make stateful with stateless in a service. And anonymous just gifted an anonymous user gifted a sub to Shmuley. Congratulations, Shmuley. Uh, you've now got a three month, your third month of sub. Very cool. And with all of our subs, we'll make a donation to veterans who code. All right. Um, yeah. So if we were the okay hang on yeah, anonymous gets a lot of money they do i don't know who anonymous is but uh, the anonymous folks get a, have a lot of money um so right now the bot is very stateful by itself but if we have a channel right each channel that's interaction interacting with a channel at some point needs to be stateful. Every container should be stateless, should have config passed in, should log to standard out. Um, I'm not a fan of logging to standard out. Logging to the console is, is what Robert Tables is suggesting. Because what that'll run, what I would prefer it go somewhere that's a little bit more stateful push it out to somewhere to some other service where it can be captured and then analyzed later then a worker is a container by itself oh so you're looking at abstracting one level above this that's interesting that's interesting and I can definitely see that as for off thank you for the follow and three I debt thank you for the follow as well uh, or is that 3-I-D-E-T? 
let me know. But I look forward to seeing both of you in the chat room. Um, so, so what brief, what brief Cobra is suggesting that this isn't too bad an idea. We have a controller service that is the Pixelbot, and it spins up, it it starts and manages child application processes that are the individual chat room connections and managers. Would you recommend processing thousands of messages in real time? All of the queue systems I've seen would be too slow and rely on polling. No, I don't want to do polling. Don't want to do polling. But, um, no, we, we skip forward a little bit here, uh, Sushinator, but there is, there is a lot of stuff out there uh, on the YouTube channel about the bot. So if we see this is this is interesting. Um, have the worker as separate containers. Yes, yeah, that that's where I'm I'm I, I picked up on that brave cobra. So the the bot is a service, and each one of these workers is itself another container that's being joined in and managed, and each one of these is able to manage tens of thousands of messages. Yeah. Instead of having a major application in each one of these is a collection of threads. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. I So I ran into a little bit of this with some application design a couple of years ago where we actually busted through... Um, the, the three gig threshold for Windows application processes. So, all right, if we're gonna take these and bust these out a little bit, let's get rid of this. So we're gonna have then a primary process. Uh, we would call them master-slave processes a long time ago, but those aren't, those aren't the most politically correct terms for these processes. And we should probably call them something along the lines of, uh, what is it, director, and child processes. Akka.net, so the actor model. I've never used Akka.net. I would want to do some research on that before I got into this process. Before I decided yes or no to do that. Captain Sailor is one that you like. That's not bad either. But I've I've heard director and and child processes or, or a moderator and child processes. So, um, let's do this. Let's start to refactor this a bit, and I will create... I'm going to start to rename this. We're going to call it the Pixel Bot. Yeah. Right, this is, uh, this is the moderator? No, this is the command and control service. That's what they call it. So let's call this the controls, uh, command service. Uh, oh, wait. Duh. Uh, ASP.NET Core Web Application. Yes, I want one of those. Because it's it's going to be a service, and it's going to be doing the things. I'm going to call this Pixelbot Command. And when I create this, come on. I'm actually going to choose... Oh, it's not in the box! Stop. Stop. I don't have the thing turned on. Turn that on. Use previews of the .NET Core SDK because I want to do this. Uh, add new project, ASP.NET Core. That's the name. Let's do architecture test first. Have that command service in two chat room visitors. Yes. 10 Binks coins awarded to all Binks members currently in chat. Thank you, Binks Raid. We're still in the Binks Raid? Terrific. Thank you so much. Um, orchestrator is a very good term. Yes. There you go. Good call. All right. And I'm going to... Hey! Why isn't it there? .NET 3 but it's not in the box. 
Get in the box. Why isn't it in the box? That's turned on. All right, let's restart Visual Studio. Yep. So what I want to do is I want to start this off as a microservice. Anyone in the Denver area, there's a talk meetup tonight. Oh, very cool. Good luck to you there, Moz. Severe imposter syndrome. Uh, no, no, no. Don't I don't think any less of JavaScript devs. Who said that? No, 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 no. We're we do not we do not uh, discriminate against other developers, other programming languages, not at all. Otherwise, I will moderate your keister right out of here. We can show off AKS. Ooh, we'll eventually get to AKS. Yes, the Azure Kubernetes service. All right. So if I do that, but I want to rename this part to Orchestrator. There it is. Do 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 do. I clicked. There we go. And there's ASP.NET Core 3.0. And I'm going to use a worker service because I don't really have a user interface for this. But I want. No, you know what? No, no, no. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yes, Azure Kubernetes service. Absolutely. It's amazing. Try it sometime. You might like it. Um, do I want a worker service for the orchestrator, or do I want to be able to view a web page that... You know what? Let's view a web page that shows it. So I'm going to use Razor Components here. I could do it with Blazor, but I'm going to use server-side Blazor. Oh, yeah, that's right. Server-side Blazor. That's a thing. I am more Azure inclined. Um, there's several reasons why I'm more Azure inclined. And it starts with my employer. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Now this is um, this is accepted normal because I'm turning on pre-release tools. So, all right. So the orchestrator, I want to have a little bit of user interface to go with it, but it's mainly going to sit here and listen and respond and manage the processes that are joined into it. Uh, cool. Glad to hear it. Thanks so much for working that out, friends. Wow. Um, all right. So the orchestrator process has a startup here, and I'm going to... I need to have some sort of a collection of services that are registered, right? The, the service... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? the service models that we're going to need hanging out there and listening and running. Group hug. Cool. So I think I need some sort of a model for these other items to connect in and and use. And those things, we'll do ASP.NET Core. These ones will make work worker services. We'll call these, let's call these, uh, not workers. Yeah, workers. Sure. Worker service. All right. So the worker service template here is it's a console application that has all the things to run and be a uh, to be an application, right? It's got things configure services, a hosted worker service, and that worker service has accepts a logger, and all it does by default is just log every second out to the uh, uh, extract method, uh, whatever. It just logs every second out to the log what the time is. Yeah, we're going to be careful with that name. Oh, yes. Workers is going to be a thing in .NET 3? Uh, yes, service workers. Yes. And, and this name, that's not what I want. I want this to be like channel worker or something. Twitch channel worker. So will want these to start up, find that orchestrator service, and go connect to it. You remember doing this in, in college? Channel visitor. Why channel visitor? 
Help me out there. Helena, thanks for the hearts. Real Mo Games. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right? We're gonna we're gonna scale this. Remembering college. The fact that you can remember college tells me that you didn't have a good enough time at college. Oh my. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. More Binks is is the Binks raid still going on? I think the Binks raid I don't know. Maybe. For yep. Uh can't tell. But make sure you sign up at Binks TV. It is still going on. Fantastic. Look at that. Let me see. Head over there. Are they are they giving away another game? Oh, terrific. Look at that. Featured streamer. Next raid soon. All right. And Helena C, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate that. Um, I didn't, I don't do coding anymore. That's okay. No problem there. We're learning and working together on all this cool stuff. Next raid soon. Soon. All right. Um, so each one of these workers needs to be passed in some amount of configuration as to where the orchestrator is so it knows how to go and connect and start logging and communicating based on that. Can you spin up an extra sidecar container based on a trigger in Kubernetes? I thought so. I thought you could. Go to your name on the Binks page, click invite to get my event so I can get bonus coins. Oh, how do I do that? How do I do that? I... Honestly, I didn't get any information about I, I got a big email. Hey, you've been approved as a Bink streamer. And I'm like, oh, great. What does that mean? I don't have time to look at this right now. Um, I've got badges. I've got things over here. And I hear myself. That's a problem. Um, I, I'm a... No. Uh, am I a Bink's partner? I don't know. I don't have any votes. I don't... Whatever. Uh, about us. I don't see an invite link. No. Uh, no. I don't see anything there. Yeah. Don't know. Um, yeah, I've been very confused by Binks. I didn't even know I was eligible for this thing. About, edit, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, there is no invite link over there. Uh, Wolf Hybrid. Um, might be high level spam. Um, no. There is my invite link. Oh! Okay. Thank you, Wolf Hybrid. There you go. If you want to sign up for Binks, use that. And you can sign up and... And... I guess I get credit for you signing up. Okay. Yeah, it, I'm... I'm trying to follow along with it. And, uh... Yeah. Like I said, I didn't... I didn't know I was even eligible for this. All right. So these worker threads, when they start up, these worker processes, we need to have them connect back to the orchestrator so they know... They can communicate back and forth. There's a couple different ways to do that. But I want two-way communication between them. So the question in my mind is... Let me know, chat room. Do we set up a SignalR hub on the orchestrator and make each one of the workers a SignalR client that's listening for commands back and forth? More Binks coins for the Binks members in chat. There you go. It's hidden under a sub-menu. Click your name and a drop down menu appears. Uh, okay. Neat. Um, yeah, I've got to spend some time figuring out Binks. So, um, but thanks so much. I appreciate everybody for stopping by from Binks. So let's write some code. Absolutely. I think, so Carrie, what do you think? Do we do signal R? Azure service bus in between? No. Dear Lord, no. What, do you think I'm bringing a sledgehammer to this? Ugh. Um. 
maybe at some point the service bus is, is the scale we need to get to. For right now, I think we can get a, for a couple of, just a couple of these things, let's create a signal R connection. Just to get this moving. Because I think, I think service bus is way too big. Too significant. Eventually we'll need it, but not yet. Beef or chicken? Beef or chicken, what? Service bus? Signal R. No, we're not cooking. Do the thing with Signal R. Uh, if you did not sign up to promote Binks, they might take advantage of you as a celebrity in the scene. I don't know. Couldn't you trigger a release of Azure Pipeline to up the container? Ooh, that's neat, Stelzy. Well, I think... If this is running inside of Kubernetes, there's ways in, in Kubernetes, and this is something i got to spend some time learning, to trigger another instance of a, a container to be spun up. What is Service Bus, and why not RabbitMQ? Service Bus is... Um, Service Bus is, a, is um, just like RabbitMQ. R RabbitMQ is a, a queuing service that allows you to publish and listen to messages that need to be transported between applications. Service Bus is a much larger global scale, uh, Azure Service Bus, that is, global scale method of that queuing and transmission that'll listen on various topics and uh, you can listen for those and publish messages appropriately and all kinds of applications that are listening on those topics all around the world can receive those messages and act appropriately. So, a lot of power there. Not something I want to dive into lightly and I don't want to couple this to Azure Service Bus right away. Let's let's get there, um, but it'll take some time. Why do I have a yellow triangle on that? Eh, no worries. All right, so let's let's create um uh, let's call this uh, let's create an I proxy uh, orchis I orchestrator proxy so that we have some way to communicate back and forth to the orchestrator and then we'll define well we'll start off defining a signal R orchestrator proxy that knows how to interact and then we'll and then. later we'll create one for service bus you'd want this to work with something locally yes that's why signal R I think is a good way to start there is a service bus emulator you can run locally I don't it, there's a little bit of overhead there active MQ no don't need to go quite that far. We can do this with SignalR and, and start both of the applications at the same time. So I think um, we're going to need a connect method, right? So that it knows how to connect. Uh, we're going to need a disconnect method. Um, we're going to need... What happens... So when we connect, we disconnect, and then we're going to have the various methods that we're going to pass down that we're going to notify uh, the, the worker bot channel to do. A connect method like, no, not like farmersonly.com. <laughs> I see you there, teal old man. Docker file and Docker compose your... your way ahead of things here, Robert Tables. Um, when this gets configured, yeah, let's let's start with these two, right? You want that to be more generic. Intro messages. Uh, all right, catch you later, uh, engineer. Good to see you. All right. Um... So I need to add, well, I need to add a signal art client here, right? Browse. It's Microsoft ASP.NET Core signal art. Am I going to find it? Am I going to find it? Uh, no, no. C 
signal our client. There we go. Yes, that's the one I want. Go, go. Install all of all of the things. All the things. Install them. Do it now. Throw me a freaking bone here. Do it. The current SDK does not support targeting .NET Core 3. Are you threatening me? Yes, it does. Core.client. Yes. Oh! Um, good catch. The package source is uh, the .NET Core on my get. I should probably have pulled that from the NuGet. Dot client. There it is. Uh, remove that one. Install this one. Go, go, go. Dot client. Dot core. Is it? Why don't I want just client? Let's, get, let's go with this one. No. But it it's... Um, why is it telling me that it doesn't have .NET Core 3? Well, there's a reason it's not in the box. Netcore app three. Let's check the folder. Why'd I open it that way? Uh, here. Open in File Explorer, go up one. Cause there's a global JSON here. Fajam. That's a word. Um, I don't want to just nuke this. Well, my current SDK version is... <sighs> yeah. This one. So if I grab that, put it in there, save that. Uh, rebuild. See what happens. Nah, it's the global JSON. It's a little grouchy. Restore completed, rebuild succeeded. See? And now I got the yellow triangles going away. Let's do this. Let's add into solution items. Just so that I have it here and I can see that it's a thing. Let me add global JSON there so that I know there's a global JSON attached to this project that's controlling the SDK. Uh, All right, so that's fine. So now if I want to start creating that SignalR proxy, right? Uh, let's just start it right here. Uh, public class SignalR proxy right and this is going to implement that i orchestrator proxy so yes implement that interface karnak i forgot to start you I need to put that in my startup um, all right so now we have a connect and a disconnect and we need to pass into this configuration 10 more Binks coins to all Binks members currently in chat. If you want to join Binks, you could win free games. Check it out. Click through that link. Sign up. And, uh, yeah. You can win free Steam games. So I'm going to move this. Uh, hey, hey. Control dot. Move the type. Ouch. Really? Nope, that refactoring does not want to work. Well, it's preview tooling. What can I say? 
Uh, what did I call it? Signal, signal, R, proxy. Oh no. I already have one. I've actually got two of them. Go away, shoot. Did it put it here? It did put it here. Hmm. Thanks for being a Binks member. There we go. Um, all right. So signal or proxy. It's going to connect. It's going to disconnect. I need to receive into this thing uh, some configuration. Right? So that I know where to connect out to. Um, so let's say this dot... Um, orchestrator URL equals, right? Because I need to tell it where to go for signal or to connect. Um, and I'm not going to get too complicated here. So this should be... Uh, da, da, da. We should probably make this a new URI. Okay, so now that's a URI, so let's create a read-only property for that. Bam. Uh, the location of the orchestrator we are working for, right? So Binks is legit, just confused. Cool. All right, so now I have a URL for where to connect, so now I can actually create that uh, client. So let's say this dot... Client equals new, uh, nope. Microsoft ASP.NET Core SignalR client. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I can do connection factory, right? Oh, no. I thought there was a static method on there. Factory for creating HTTP connection. No. I don't want that. I want a hub connection builder dot no. Do I have to create a new one of those? Dot build. No. Don't I have to give it some information? Dot services dot... There we go. Add... Service descriptor item. The object to add to the collection. Well, that's... Not what I want. Um, right, so, s yeah, that's not going to work. It's not build either. All right, let's go do some research here. SignalR client.net. New hub connection builder with URL. If I control dot on that, I get a using statement. It's an extension method. Ugh. Okay. With URL, then I have to give it the URL. I can give it, it as a URI, which will be orchestrator URL. Uh, and then dot build. Right, and build returns a hub connection. Um, all right, fine. We'll call that connection. And we'll create one of those. So now I've got my connection. I don't want a public. That's fine. Disconnect. Uh, of course. All right. So now... Uh, all right, so here's where I need to wire up the various events. Any credentials? We'll figure out credentials. Right, at some point, right, there is a way to do credentials there. Call client methods. Um, 
And actually, do we really need credentials if everything's behind a firewall? We should do credentials. We should do credentials. Credentials would be a thing. We need credentials. What if you call disconnect before connect? Then you feel shame. Seems kind of hard to start containers with specific config ad hoc within Kubernetes. Um, yeah, we could do that. We could do that. That's that's not completely terrible. Uh, we need to have a researching playlist that comes on and you would totally steal it and it's mostly Quiltoni, the Quiltoni sound clip while we're out searching, finding things, looking around. There she goes, doing that thing she does. Um, so we need to be able to handle various events that come in and that's what this on does. We, like, we want to make sure that we handle, um the dog my dog or Quiltoni's dog what what did I do look at that and the, Quiltoni comes in and the sentiment went flying back over 70 it's amazing um, Quiltoni's got some beautiful dogs Alfred's in your lap that's terrific I guess I do have a dog um, I do have a dog <clears throat> um, I, I, and I do have a picture of it. I need to go find the appropriate folder that it's in. There she is. And that zoomed in really far. There we go. That's my dog. That's Dee Dee. Dee Dee the dog. She's an Akita. Came with the name. Doggo! Yep. It is way easy to distract me. It is. And I apologize for that. Do it! Yeah, 100 bits for Dee Dee. There we go. That's her. rubber tables with oh, there we go all right um so the one thing that that this does right we need to make sure we start the connection before we end this but we need to also handle a lost connection so if the connection is closed we need to do some sort of a closed logic i think we actually want to reopen the connection your brother is an akita breeder nice that is an akita Yeah, right? As she's all, what's with this phone thing, Dad? What are you doing there? Um, so, right, so that is, yeah, connection dot closed. And I can, right, I can create a method to do this, or I can do this anonymously here, right? This is called an anonymous method. And we'll just start this up, and we will, yeah, we're using a lambda. So this will return a task, completed task. And I need to make sure we're referencing tasks. So now when the connection is closed, we actually want to try and reopen it. Event delegate, no Lambda. Uh, well, it, it's a Lambda, but it's, it, yeah, it's an anonymous function here, right? This structure is a Lambda. 
So, uh, you have to reconnect. Yep. So what I'm looking at doing here, this is going to be asynchronous too, isn't it? Because if I want to reconnect, right, somewhere down here, we got to do start async. But we need to do this synchronously, so we got to do these. Um, <laughs> so I, I want to say connection dot start async, but I don't want to just start async. I want to task dot uh, not oh wait all oh, task delay. That's what it is. Uh, let's wait five seconds. No, let's wait two second, two seconds. And I need to do get await or get results because this isn't an asynchronous. Ah, uh, heck. Ah, uh, heck. Robert Tables there, you heard me say it. Heck. Let's change these to... Yeah, change these to tasks. <coughs> Excuse me. Which means down here, this can be an async task. And then I can get rid of this and make it like that which means this can be a sync. Boom, boom. Uh, no. Oh, here we go again. Um, I'll wait that. Good. And this can just be like that. And I can do that thing. Did I make, did I make disconnect a task? Yep, I did. All right, so we'll make this an async task and get rid of those. Boom, okay. <clears throat> I was pointing out it's an event, but instead it's the delegate to just use a Lambda. Right, it is an event, yes, yes, yes. This has to become standard emoji. Uh, does the proxy have a cancellation token or something to know when we actually want it to shut it, shut down so we don't try and reconnect in that instance? Good point. Um, so let's just create a private bool. I, I don't want to create a cancellation. Uh, yeah, all right. Cancellation token is the right way to go. Cancellation token instead of just a uh, what's it called a boolean there um, token so we're going to want to create a cancellation token um, which means we also need a source right oh you're right it should be connect async and Look at this. Love the pair of programming going on here. Catching my naming snafu. It should be connect async and disconnect async. These are asynchronous methods, so we want to make sure that while they're decorated with the async keyword here, we also suffix them with the word async. Um, do, 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 do. do you have to secure the access to connection because of the async await code? I'm okay with that, sure. Right, and then I can just do that. Thank you, is that Thea G Design? I appreciate you joining us. Thanks for the follow. I look forward to seeing you in the chat room, Thea. I hope it's Thea. I hope I have that right. Or is it the AG Design? Or is it Thea? Or is it Theo? Theo, my boy, get a pudding. I shouldn't. We love Cosby in this town, except for when he makes silly mistakes. Um, no, but we don't want folks tinkering with that connection from outside of here. Um, all right, so we, if we're going to have a cancellation token, right, we need to create a, right, there needs to be a cancellation token source. Uh, 
right? Which is just another thing that we're going to have out here. Well, the cancellation token source we should probably manage at the program so that we notify everybody <coughs> that it's shutting down. Uh, private, well, now it's a field. Is a visiting bot really a stateful service? Yes. Because it's managing the state of the interactions with folks <clears throat> in the chat room. Yes. It needs to remember all that. Still like the Cosby show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are there other... T there's other times where I'm going to shut down the proxy. I don't want a cancellation token source per proxy. I want a cancellation token per proxy. But then I'm going to be signaling them separately. I, th I don't think I need a proper cancellation token. I think I would do better off with a boolean here. That affects the same thing. Right? So that here... Is that Seneschal Audrey? Thank you for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. What does the argument to closed tell you? Uh, if there was an error. Um, right? I mean, we could inspect if there was an error. So if no error, it was closed on purpose. It's a good catch. Good catch by Shmuley. Uh, no error means the connection was closed on purpose. The visiting bot should handle the request back to the orchestrator. I don't think it needs to remember the state itself, only the connection to the chat part. No, 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 no. If each one of these is a process, right, you're you're talking about... Uh, wait, we're iterating on this, right? So there are enhancements that chat says that don't make it into this release. I agree. I don't want to get too, too far down here. Configure a wait. Okay, hang on, hang on. Uh, Ian Colt, thank you for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. I look forward to seeing you in the chat room. Uh, On-site techni technical interview on Friday, and you're nervous. Sky high AF. Best of luck to you. Um, On-site technical interviews are, are never easy. Relax, stay focused. You know your stuff. You can get this. Um, take care, Sushinator. Great to see you today. So, all right. I think this does our connection okay. We need to have it proxy and handle the various methods that it's going to receive here. Um, yeah. Um... All right, so that knows how to connect. And then we're gonna handle some sort of methods and raise the, make those calls back to. Um, yeah, it is a tough balance there, Robert Tables. I gotta figure out what's too much, what's enough to just get the job done. So I think this will do the connection just fine. And I need to Configure the various messages returned from the orchestrator. 
Okay. So then our, and I wanna, let's get rid of this. Okay. So now we're going to have a bot worker, right? And this is a background service. Execute async. So this is being constructed and then it'll be executed asynchronously. Add hosted service. And this is going to be, uh, what's it called? Bot worker, right? Oh my goodness. Uh, do we want to log if there's an error and let it close if the connection was lost too often? Sure, Stelzy. Sure. Um... Log the error and uh, die gracefully if uh, erroring out too much. So yes, we need to do something there. Um, let's do this. If, uh, if too many errors, And what I'll do is I'll create this. Let's do this here. Add logging and diagnostics. We'll figure that out later. But we have a way now to capture and actually do something with that. Sounds like poly.net. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. How would you know on the orchestrator which container is connected to which room? So we need to fit. You're you're a little bit further ahead of me here. As as we start to really get into this, right? So we're going to connect. We're going to disconnect. So when we get connected, when when this starts up, we want it to go and connect out to the orchestrator. And the orchestrator, we want to send us information about which room to connect to. Right? Um... Now, isn't there... I thought there was a way to specify the client interface. Invoke, right, hub, hub methods, no. Call client methods from hub. Yeah, I want uh, that strongly typed. going where I thought it would. No. Oh, dear Lord. No, no. Um. Yeah, there it is. On and then a... Yeah. The name of the hub method. Uh, uh, Entity Adam, thank you for the follow. I appreciate you joining me. Let's see here. 
can one bot container start X SignalR client connections and do the work for X rooms? Crashing then would disconnect from those X rooms. Sure, right. That makes sense. That's that's something to have to handle. Um, on connect to, let's create a method called connect to room. And then what should it do? Um, it should do a thing. Um, I feel like there should be an event handler. Well, an action. It's, look. Yeah. So... We've implemented the proxy. The proxy knows how to connect out to the service. Yeah, I, I definitely think it's possible that we get a multiple workers inside of one of these. But for right now, I'm just going to create one. Um, on connect to room, we need a method to execute, but we want that method to be coming from the worker. Um. All right, Ancient Coder, take care. Thanks for joining us. Maybe that's a property of the orchestrator, right? Um, connect to room string room name. Uh, uh hang on. That's going to be an action. So it's it's not just a task. It's a task that's an action with a string. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Look at that. And we'll default that to no. Oh, wait a sec. I just defined an interface. That is a bad idea, Jeff. Don't do that. Don't. Do that. That was a C sharp eight feature. I could have used it, but bad idea. Okay. So connection on connect to room. We want to uh, connect to room. And actually, we're going to be passed a, a command to pass it into Bobby Blitzkrieg. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate you joining us. Um, what should be independent? Any given container can connect to any given chat room. Yes. Yes. Um, so I'm going to... Yeah, I think I need some methods here that we're going to need to share... Um, so there's the order notification client. This doesn't depend on anything. I'm going to add another interface here. And this will be I... Uh, I communicate to orchestrator. I don't know. Right? And that connect to room. Right? Task connect to room. Well, yeah. String new room. So now, if I go back over here, I communicate to orchestrator. So this will say, hey, these things know how to do this. That. Nope. Doesn't want to add that reference. Nuts. Uh-huh. Add reference. Core. One thing I don't like about documentation recently is how everything just links to GitHub, which means you have to dig through a project. Yeah, I kind of agree with you there. Now, why am I getting a yellow triangle? 
So now if I control dot on that, nope, still doesn't like it. The first argument type. I don't think I did that right. I don't think I did that right. And that makes me sad. Um, so I'm going to pass an array of parameter type. That's annoying. Uh, the JK, thanks so much for the sub. Yeah. Very cool. Thanks for joining us. Type of string. And we'll call connect to room. Now, see, look. There's no argument given that corresponds to the formal parameter state. Um, string method name. It's not a function. So it's telling me that that action cannot be Oh, this needs to be a. F oh dear God! This needs to be a funk. I think the orchestrator should be able to give a worker the command to connect a room on its behalf, and let the worker do the chat connection and set up a signal or connection back. Yes. Hey, J.K. Oh, we're doing we're doing well. So the worker thread has to start up, join the orchestrator. And once it's joined, receive a command that says, okay, you need to go connect to this. And at that point, it, the the worker thread, the work, the bot worker, goes, connects, and starts doing its thing. Yes. I'm trying to get this, right, the instruction, connect to the room. But this needs to be a... Needs to be a funk. Um, why is it a funk object? Hmm. Why, why doesn't it have... When the stream ends, the worker becomes available again to connect to another stream. Yes. This looks like a job for actors. So I'm not familiar with the actor uh, the actor framework. Um, with actor models. It sounds like it, but I'm not familiar with that. Uh, looking here. Looking... Oh, wow. All right. Um, mm -hmm. The more... It, uh, w then when the stream ends, the worker becomes available. Yes. Yes. So let's do this. Yeah, I, I hear you people saying Akka.net. I don't know that. And I don't think you want me to spend the rest of the stream... Researching and teaching myself how to use Akka. You make an actor and send messages and the actor does something with it. Does it work locally and... And it's, it's automatically thread safe, huh? Hmm. 
Well, that's not right. Oh, no, it is. Dear Lord, I don't think we're learning Akka. 17 week boot camp. Well, that just gave me a big turn off. Um, and I don't see documentation from their website. So getaka.net. Distributed, supervision and monitoring. Yeah. Yeah. A device manager, user dashboards. Yep. A group with a set of devices. Yep. All right. Sounds like I've got some reading to do. But how does Akka work in Azure? Is it going to land all the things that we need? Uh, yeah, I've got a ton of reading to do here. The docs is a bit talkative. I'm seeing that. Seems like a nuclear bomb to kill an ant, given the current problem. Actually, uh, coding gorilla, it's gonna get a lot more. It's gonna get a lot bigger, quick. What we're trying to do with this, because what we're starting with is is going to grow. It's gonna grow quick. Akka should be independent of Azure. There, I hope. Well, that's not easy. What does Akka Cluster do? Because if I want this to run on Kubernetes eventually. Oh boy. Yeah, this definitely lifts out a lot of the networking protocol that we were talking about building. Leaders, location, yeah. No, doesn't. The fact that it didn't autocomplete that tells me nobody's doing it. Yeah, I'm looking for the TLDR. You're right, Michael Jolly. You create Akka system and code, add actors to it. And each one of these worker threads would be actors. Yeah. Orleans is the actor pattern for Azure with a smaller learning curve. 
It is a message bus coding gorilla to start and stop processes. Is Aka Is it dot net standard two? Man, whoever said that the uh, documentation is chatty isn't kidding here. All right. What's the package? No, that's building and distributing. Yes. Has an official NuGet package. Why don't you tell me what it is? Uh huh. Dependencies. Uh, net standard one six. Okay, so we can use it with .NET Core. I just want to get a client talking to a server. But this connection on syntax is just... Yeah. Uh, Will Adama, thank you for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. Um, right, signal our client. No, no, no. Connection on string string. Action string, there we go. So let's get rid of the task on that. Now that works. Okay. But then I'm doing the connection at that point and then off doing something else so what I'm what I'm considering here is yeah all of this stuff would be replaced with Akka there's what I'm thinking rubber tables Yagni and I'm not familiar with it at all Brave Cobra which is why I'm like I don't want to dive into that right now and we're a little bit over when I wanted to end um Well, what I, what I do want to be able to do is I want to be able to start up and have... I, I want to have two bots 
right? In our first initial configuration, MVP of this, the minimum viable product of this deployment, it's going to be two bots deployed. One that's listening for Quiltoni's channel and another one that's listening for Dryad T's channel because she's using this bot as well. So instead of having two different configurations <clears throat> and two different deployments, we'll have one deployment with two workers that are able to manage the two different chat rooms. Are those two workers in the same process? Are they in different processes? I don't know how to decide that. That's a problem we're gonna have to figure out is how do we decide to start another worker in the same process or to fork and start another process? Different containers, different processes. So if we have a hundred different if we have a hundred different chats that we're interacting with, each one of those is a separate container, scaling up and down appropriately depending on how many folks are in that chat. And that's what actors are good for is suggesting is what Ad entity Adam is suggesting. Okay. So then here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to save where we are. And I'm going to add what I currently have here. Uh -huh. Um, starting work on the distributed architecture of the cloud-based bot. And key in that passphrase. Got it right. Push that up, and I think we call it a day here while we go learn some more about this. Spin up 10 worker containers, use two to connect to those rooms. And then when the stream ends, let the worker disconnect and be available for another stream. Yes. I think that's that's a great goal for that. Orleans is super simple and can run on Kubernetes. Orleans can create workers based in the same silo, based on a set of data when that worker is called. And that's kind of the actor model. All right. Learning something new. I think, we, I think that's a model we go after then. But I'm not going to spend time learning it here. I think we come back and we attack it again on Thursday. All right. Well, thanks so much, everybody in the chat room. I think we've got the basics of where we want to take this architecture laid out. We know that we want to build something that can scale and have a different process for each one of the chat rooms that we want folks to connect into. And then we're going to, um, oops, that didn't ac actually push. And then we'll be able to use Kubernetes to scale that up and down in order to interact appropriately with each one of the chat rooms that we have. And then we'll have a web service that shows the interactions and publishes stuff for those bots. Um, and that interaction with ASP.NET Core to display, here's the interactions from the bot, that will end up being SignalR. Thank you, Robert Tables. I really appreciate that. Um, I'll even just change this real quick. And we will git commit. I spelled a mend wrong. It didn't amend. It added another one. You make me sad. What? <sighs> I'm losing it here. I'm losing it here, kids. Now you're, you're killing me here, Carrie. I'm going to have to do this now. No, not checked. I want to make sure I log these. Right, did we save that? Yes. Let's try this again. Git commit. There we 
There we go. And force. Cool. Thanks so much. Uh, I know. All right. Um, you know what? I think I think it might be fun to raid. Let's see if let's see if she's still broadcasting. So one of the folks who uses this bot is Dryad T. Michael Jolly with a hundred. Thanks so much. Um, let's do this. Let's raid Dryad T. She's actually making teacups right now, and teacups are the currency that she uses on her stream. Dryad T. All right. So she's another crafting streamer. She uses she's making teacups and she sells blends of tea, and that's what she does on her stream. But she's using this bot. All right. So let's get ready for the raid. There you go. Subscribers, grab that top line of code. And uh, <laughs> thank you for all the cheers, and, and we will make donations to Veterans Who Code. And uh, we're going to raid our friend Dryad T here in just a few seconds, all right? Make sure you let her know that we're happy to see her and that we're encouraging and enjoy what she's working on over there. But I'll see you on Thursday, and we'll talk a little bit more about the actor model and our distributed architecture then, all right? <laughs> You're... You're freaking me out here with all these cheers. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It's it's magical. It really is. Um, thanks so much. Say hi to Dryad T for me, and I'll see you on Thursday. Take care.